welcome welcome to your favorite if not most favorite program revival of truth for righteousness a presentation of the deeper life bible church in jamaica and is sponsored by the deeper life school of evangelism we are located at number 4c norwich avenue kingston 11 and we want to welcome you call us so we can interact with you our phone numbers are 876-923-1040 or 876-631-7108 our email is simply deeper life jamaica at yahoo.com you will need to visit our website so you can have an idea of what are the services we offer the website is www.deeperlifeschoolofevangelism.org and when you visit there we also want to encourage you to visit that button that says donate because we need you to help us support and sustain this program on social media revival of truth has made many people to return to the lord see souls being saved believers being more edified and educated if this is your first time listening i will encourage you to listen very attentively and see what we are saying is real or not especially nowadays that the truth is swept under the carpet and that's why the bible says according to john chapter 8 verse 32 ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and if the son shall set you free you'll be free indeed my friend the bible says buy the truth and sell it not hallelujah buy wisdom and sell it not buy understanding and sell it not and jesus says i am the way the truth and life eternal welcome indeed we are going to start the day with our jamaica bible reading but let me just remind you again that the deeper life bible church we have sunday services which is at the same venue I, re I mentioned to you before. Uh, our services begin at 9 in the morning. And on Sunday, we'll be having school of prayer, which I need to tell you more, because for some time it was suspended. But we are reactivating it very soon. Also to mention that we'll soon be taking registration for new students who will be coming to the school from december for orientation and then classes begin in january so prepare your mind to be part of the deeper life school of evangelism where you study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth second timothy chapter 2 verse 15. all right to begin the day we're going to read from our Jamaican Bible, which is from the Gospel according to John chapter 14. So take your Bible, take your notebook, and be attentive because God still speaks. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you very much for your loving kindness. We thank you for the privilege you have given us to read the Holy Bible and be directed by your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that as many as will be listening today and be reading today, oh God, let your word purge our heart, purify our heart. Let your word bring conviction for conversion. Let your word bring sanctification of the spirit of man because your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word is fire. Your word is the food for the soul. Father, as we read your word, we pray that this word will have a place in our hearts and you, God, will reign and rule within us to the glory of your holy name. 
that your son Jesus may be magnified. Father, bless us. Bless all our listeners by simply listening to your word. Save souls by listening to your word. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and bring victory to the weak. We thank you because we know you've answered. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Stay tuned. Enjoy the Bible reading. John chapter 14. No worry on yourself. Trust in a God and trust in a me too. And no through me in a my father's house. If I never saw it, God wouldn't say nothing to you. I go away to fix up one place for you. Know. And after I go away, I go fix it up. I go and come back, come take you, know, carry go away with me. So that you know, can't do with me anywhere me there. You no know, know the way to go which part me I go. Thomas then said to him, say, Lord, we don't know the way if we go, which part to they go. Oh, we can't get to know the way if we go there. Jesus answered him and said, Me are the way. Me are the truth. Me are the one where make people can live. Nobody can go to the Father if them not go through me. No, if you don't know me for true, then you know what I know my Father too. From now on, you don't know him and you don't see him. Philip said, Lord, make we see the Father, and we will satisfy with that. So Jesus said to him, say, You don't know me, Philip, after me the monks on the so long. Anybody who see me, see the Father too. All you fear ask me, say, show with the Father. You don't believe, say, me live in the Father, and the Father live in me. They sit in them when me say, me not just say them half of me one. And the Father will live in me and do him walk. Trust me when I say I live in the Father and that the Father live in me. And if you can't believe me, see what I say, then believe me, see the miracle them where you say. For true, true, I tell you, say, anybody will believe in me, I go walk the powerful miracle them where I do. Them all I go walk more powerful miracle than what I do now, because I go back at the Father. And me will do anything you no know, ask for, because you know, I'm a father. Me go and do it so that the boy picnic can get for sure how the father big and powerful. You no know, can ask me for anything, because you know, I'm a father. And me will give it to you. Know. If you know, love me for true, you no know, go and do all that I tell you know, for do. And me go ask my father for send one day. That's the matter for help you know, and they will do you know, all the time. That's the matter there are the spirit where show people the truth sitting them about God. The worldly and them can't take him in and make him control them life. Cause them no see him and them no know him. But who no know him? Cause him live with uno and I got there inside of uno. Me not go left uno like say uno a picnic without no mother or father. Me I come back to uno. Little more from now, the worldly and them now go see me again. But who no going to see me? Come here, live. Who no going to live too? When that day they come, who no go see me live in my father? That who no live in me? And that me live in who no? The Somali when know and do what I say, and them love me. My father go love the Somali when love me. Me go love them too. And I go and show them who I be. Then Judas. No Judas is carried now. One next man when named Judas to ask him, say, But Lord, what make we are going to see you? But you're not going to make the world and them see you. Jesus said to him, say, If somebody love me, then that somebody there I got to do what I said them for do. My father I got to love them, and the two away I got to live with them. Somebody will not love me, not do what I say. They sit in them on a year, me say, I know me come up with them, and my father, the one who send me come here. Me I said them sitting here to uno while me the monks uno. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, where the father go send, car uno and my father, he may go teach uno everything, and he may go remember uno about everything me tell uno. Me I left go away, but me I go make uno have peace in uno heart. The kind of peace where me have in a female heart. I know the said kind of peace you get from the world. No me could no hard bad or no. I no catch no afraid. Only hear me telling you say, me I go away and me I come back to you. No. 
If you don't love me, you know that glad to me I go to my father, because my father is bigger than me. I tell you before it happens, so that when it do happen, you can believe that true me did the talk. I don't go talk to you for much longer, because the ruler of the world is upon him where I come. He doesn't have no power over me. My uncle I do what my father tell me to do, so that the people that I mean of the world can know that I love my father. Come, make we left go away from that place here. Yeah. Welcome back. Having enjoyed that Bible reading, yes, you do. And you can see how sweet our language is. You call it Patois, we say Jamaican language. Because every country has its own language. And I love this Jamaican language, you know, because it is what we use in reaching this nation. If church evangelism is real we have to get down to the level of the common man in the community can you imagine politicians you watch politicians you hear the prime minister and you see these highly educated people in the universities who are in politics but when they want to win the votes of the people they speak in their language they don't speak English grammar. But we thank God that God is breaking through. That even now we see almost every program in GIS, various media houses, they are now using Jamaican language to communicate to the people. Hallelujah. For the benefit of those who are just joining us, this is Revival of Truth, a presentation of the Deeper Life Bible Church in Jamaica and sponsored by Deeper Life School of Evangelism. I want to encourage you to take hold of your Bible, your notebook, and lend me your ears. In fact, for those of you who are on the Facebook, this is a time for you to begin to share with your friends. Those of you who are watching through the YouTube, this is the time for you to begin to share with your friends invite them invite them remember somebody invited you to to the gospel then similarly show the same gesture to the other people invite others to hear the word of god so they can be transformed that god may be glorified let's pray again almighty god our everlasting Father, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the maker of the universe. We give you all the praise. We give you all the worship. You are God and God alone. Father, we pray that this word we are speaking today from your holy book will bear fruit in every heart. Father, this word will bring souls into the kingdom, restore backslider. This word, oh God, will pierce through the mind of the, whether rebellious people or those who are adamant to the truth. But God, we pray that even believers will be educated and edified because your word gives life. And your word gives light. Bless us, mighty God. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Last broadcast, I began to speak on the personality of the Holy Spirit. And I told you that ultimately we are going to look at the person of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But as a starting point, we began to say, that many people do not know that the Holy Spirit is God. In fact, in some churches, the Holy Spirit is relegated to the background. And in some churches, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is amplified more than the Father and more than Jesus Christ. And we took time explaining that heaven or Godhead is not just of the Father or 
of the word or of the Holy Ghost, but that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, the three of them, which is a mystery to us, we mortal men, the three of them make heaven. As we mentioned to you, if you go back again quickly to First John, you will see it there in First John, reading from chapter 5, in verse 7, it says, For there are three that be a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three, plural, are one. And look at the definite articles that is placed before the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. He did not say the Father or the Son or the Word or the Holy Ghost. But the definite article do suggest that the Father is not the Word and is not the Holy Ghost. There are some persons who do not understand the Trinity of the Godhead. There are those in theological jargon that believe in what they call, you know, um, Unitarianism. Unitarianism are those who believe that God is one, and there's only one person in that God, and that one person changes his position from time to time. You know, he could be the father yesterday, and today he becomes the son. And tomorrow he becomes the Holy Ghost. The next tomorrow he could become the angel. Nothing goes so. There is one God. And there are three persons in that one God. Now you cannot use your intellectual power to decipher or to define or to distinguish them. It is a great mystery which I showed you last time when we read from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 30 and 31 showing that just as god says for this purpose shall a man leave father and mother and be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh the bible say is a great mystery but it's a greater mystery for you to understand that there is one god and this one god has three distinct persons in them they are not totally separated but they are distinct in their activities again i told you before there are some persons who practice or believe what you call unitarianism and they are sold those who also believe what they call trinitarianism now the trinitarianism are those um, who say there are three gods and these three gods are independent and not connected in any way. So be careful that you don't fall into any of these errors. Either you as a Christian or as a teacher. One God, yes, but three personalities we see in this one God. Yes, one God, but this one God has these three personalities that complements in order to create life if in the in the explanation of this one god you do not see the father and you do not see the word that eventually incarnated to be called jesus christ or you do not see the uh, manifestation of the holy ghost that we also call the holy spirit or the spirit of the lord whichever way sometimes people don't even understand that it is the same thing when you say Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, all of these are still making reference to the third person in Trinity. Whether the first person in Trinity or the second person in Trinity or the third person in Trinity, they all have equal power, they have equal glory, and equal, they have equal honor. If there was anything Israel was guilty of in the Old Testament, it was because of their ignorance 
of the nature and attribute of God. If you open your Bible with me to 2 Chronicles, you will see in chapter 15 of 2 Chronicles in verse 3. And it might even interest you if I read it from verse 1 to verse 3. It says, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah, and Benjamin. Listen to this. The Lord is with you, while you be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will also forsake you. It's in the Bible. Look at verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. For a long season, Israel had been without the true God. Israel had been without a teaching priest. Israel had been without the law. What are we learning here? A lot of persons call upon God, but not the true God. And this is one of the things the Lord is asking me to share with you. It is possible you have been traveling on this religious road of God. But you have not known the true God. Eh? And that's why I say for a long season. And that's why Israel had many defeats. Israel had many difficulties. Israel had many shame to themselves. Because for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. And they, they were also without a teaching priest. And they were without the law. When we talk about the true God, how do we know the true God? And that's one of the things we are bringing up here. You see, even when you come to the New Testament, you see the same sentiment. Jesus said, yes, I came into this world to save souls. But above that, to also show people about the only true God. Look at John's Gospel, chapter 17, in verse 3. This is Jesus speaking to us. He says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. Is it? So the people of that generation, they did not know the only true God. There were many gods there were many, many, many gods. And they were serving anyone they felt. <laughs> when you look at the book of Jonah, you see when Jonah was thrown into the, uh, when Jonah was hiding under the ship, and the, and the captain of the ship said, everybody call upon your God. Call upon your God because people believe in the multiplicity of God. But there's only one true God. In that Old Testament, in that First, Second Chronicles 15, in verse 3, it says, For a long season, Israel had been without the true God. The word true should be underlined. If you come to the New Testament also, in this John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus said, This is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast said. You see, how many religions do we have in our world? Thousands and thousands, if not millions, of gods. We are right, there's only one true God. I also showed you last time, you know, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, when Paul was at Athens and he saw a place of worship. And surprisingly, Paul said, what I saw in that assembly at the platform is an inscription. Look at it in that Act of the Apostles, chapter 17, in verse uh, 23. But as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What? 
In my Bible, I believe if you have the King James Bible, you see it is written in bold capital to the unknown God. That will show you how large the inscription would have been. They say, we are worshipping the unknown God. And you know how many persons today go to whatever they will call church, synagogue, temple, assembly, mention it, but they are worshipping an unknown God. He, you don't know what is behind the curtain. You don't know what is behind that pulpit. Huh? That's why you must make sure you listen to a Bible teacher. You must listen to someone who has spiritual insight. It is not all that glitters. It's actually gold, you know. You may see what looks like a mirage that looks like a religious mirage. But yes, it's not a miracle. It is pure deception. Paul said, as I passed by, I saw what is written here to the unknown God. He now said, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in the temple made with hands, neither is he worshipped with men's hand, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth uh, to all life and breath and all things. And if you drop down to verse 30, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men of all religion, commanded all men of all denomination, commanded all men of all nation, of all continent, commanded all men everywhere to repent of ignorance. My friend, ask yourself this question. When you go to that place you call church, assembly, synagogue, temple, cathedral, with all the beauty of its elegance, ask yourself, is there a real true God there? How will you know whether it's a true place? The Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. What kind of fruit is that assembly the preacher is producing? Is it the fruit of righteousness or fruit of sin and compromise? Is it the fruit of holiness unto the Lord? And this is why we need to know the God we're talking about. Remember, we're talking about God, yes, and we are saying that this God is composed of or made up of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. I just felt I should mention this more because there are some persons who are really confused. In their church or in the assembly, the emphasis and focus is Jesus only, and Jesus is all in all. Huh? They pray to Jesus in the name of Jesus. And in some places, everything is Holy Ghost. Everything is Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, not only a gentle Holy Ghost like, like a dove, but it's the Holy Ghost that knocks them down, the Holy Ghost that makes them to hit the wall, the Holy Ghost that makes them, you know, to roll on the floor, the Holy Ghost that sometimes makes them to faint. Holy Ghost. I don't understand that kind of Holy Ghost. So we need to know which God we are really serving. Because God is not an author of confusion. Nowadays, a lot of people, they say they are worshipping, but they are so far away from the Bible. You know, it's unfortunate. Any place call itself an assembly, a gathering of a church, and the Bible is not being considered as the compass, the guide. The Bible is not being considered as regulating what is being done. I tell you, they are worshipping the unknown God. Jesus said, I am not the Father. Yes, I am not the Father. In fact, if you read from the place we read from the Jamaican Bible today, you observe Jesus says something from verse 1. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God. Believe also in me. Which means he's making reference to his father. 
because his, his father, as I told you last time, is the administrator of the Godhead. And Jesus is the ambassador of the Godhead. And the Holy Ghost is the power of the Godhead. They work in complements. They work to produce life. We don't have them. We don't have the understanding. You know, sometimes when I teach at the Bible school, I say, can you remember how you were in your mother's womb? The student will laugh and they say, Pastor, how do you think we can remember how we were, even whether as a fetus or whatever, in the womb of my mother? I don't know. Maybe you know the mystery. I don't know, but one thing that I understand is that my mother gave birth to me as a result of my father copulating, cooperating, complementing her life. And then I became the product of my father and my mother. And we say that similarly, man has no existence. But by the cooperative work of God, of the Father, and of the Word, and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then we can see what Jesus says here. That Jesus said, only when we are obedient to his word and we believe his word, then we will enjoy the true experience of the only true God. Look at that John chapter 14. See what it says. Very interesting. In John chapter 14 from verse 23, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. Watch the next sentence. And we, we, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So Jesus never claims that he is the only God. He is God in the Father. And the Father is in him. And he says, when you believe in the Father and you believe in me, we too will come in the power of the Holy Ghost and make our abode in you. So if you are where only Jesus is recognized as God, you don't have the fullness of God. You don't have it. Don't even deceive yourself and don't let anybody deceive you. You need to embrace the Father, embrace the Word, and embrace the Holy Ghost. And when you even go back to the time of creation, when God was creating humanity, in Genesis chapter 1, you can quickly open your Bible, where it is clearly written there, Genesis chapter 1, and see from verse 26, And God said, Let us make mankind in our image. Let us. God is one. But he speaks in the plurality of the three persons that we discover in one God. And God said, let us make man in our image eh? after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all, um, over all the earth, and every creeping thing uh, that creepeth upon the earth. And if you go also... To chapter 3, um, when in fact Adam and Eve failed and they fell as a result of the deception, God says something. Remember they were created perfectly, but sin contaminated them, corrupted them, and then now made them vulnerable to other problems, sickness, diseases, sorrow, hardship. But God, sympathetic God, compassionate God, says something. You know, when he looked at the effects of the fall on Adam and Eve, he says something. In chapter 3 of that same Genesis, looking from verse 21, um, yeah, verse 22 now, 
And the Lord God said, Behold, the man, mankind, is become as one of us. Again, you see the word in plural. So if you are holding on to say Jesus only or Holy Ghost only or Father only, how come? How do you explain this? Eh? And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become as, as one of us to know good and evil. Eh? And now, lest he put his foot his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So we see clearly here, you see the plural word used constantly, regularly, and Jesus constantly, regularly, is always making reference to my father. Is he made reference to the Holy Ghost. In fact, when you come to the, uh, to the gospel according to Matthew, you will see where Jesus exalted the office of the Holy Ghost, even more than himself. Huh? Yeah, Jesus exalted the office of the Holy Ghost. Come with me and see what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12. Because there are some people who do not realize that Jesus alone do not make heaven. Jesus was the only one that came into this world for the, for the sake of redemption, that he might die, shed his blood on the cross for the redemption of our soul. God the Father did not die at Calvary. No. God the Holy Ghost did not die at Calvary. It is God the Word whose name became Jesus, according to Matthew 1, 21. And that same Matthew 1, 23 said, Emmanuel, God with us. So God incarnated the human nature in order to redeem human beings from the depravity of the spirits. Hmm? And so Jesus exalted the office of the Holy Ghost when they were ascribing what he was doing to evil spirits. And Jesus said, if I cast out evil spirits by the Holy Ghost, then judgment has come upon you. Huh? And we need to know that Jesus Christ demonstrated the power of God through the Holy Ghost. Let's see the, let's see the discussion very quickly. In Matthew chapter 12, from verse 24, it says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thought and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But, verse 28, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Hallelujah. What is he saying here? No one can cast out the devil. No one can cast out evil spirits. No one can cast out demons without the Holy Ghost. Hey, you will now understand what the Bible says in Acts of the Apostles in chapter 10 verse 38. How God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who then went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil. When you look at Matthew chapter 4, verses 23, 24, you look at Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 down to 37, the wonder, the miracle, the wonderful things. Look at Mark's gospel, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, how Jesus was healing people left, right, and center. He couldn't have done it without the Holy Ghost walking in companion with him. That's why he was saying that. Do you think I was on my own alone? No, 
And you will not have known the true God if you do not recognize the triune God. Triune God, yes. One God, but three persons. And you say, how do you ascribe persons to Jesus, to the Holy Ghost? Because all the attributes of human being we could see in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, yes, is God. Let's quickly run through something that should interest you as to the personality of the Holy Ghost. Because when we say we talk about a person, there are some persons who feel that a person has to be a human being. No. God is a person. <laughs> the devil is a person. Human being is a person. And so how do we know the Holy Ghost is a person? Because of the manifestations. Number one, we are told that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, has intellect. Inasmuch as the Spirit searcheth all things, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. The Holy Ghost has intellect. That's number one. Number two, the Holy Ghost has knowledge. How do we know that? You see it again in that same 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Let me quickly open it. Because somebody is there, he's not opening the Bible. I was wondering, how do I read that? It's in the Bible. From chapter 1, verse, verse 10, he said, But God had revealed unto us by his spirits, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. There are things you will never know about God if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. There are things you will never understand from the Word of God because it is the Holy Ghost that inspired holy men to write the Holy Scriptures. Yes, man. So you will not understand the Holy Scriptures if you don't have the genuine Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, there are a lot of counterfeit Holy Ghosts nowadays. A lot of counterfeit speaking in tongues. A lot of counterfeit prophecy. Counterfeit healing. And be careful where you go. You need to pray God to give you the, 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 the gift of discerning spirits. Because all kinds of spirits, even the spirit of Antichrist, they are all here with us. And so we see clearly here that according to that verse 10 of 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, the Holy Ghost has the personality of a person. He, he has intellect. He's able to discern. Look at verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. What's he saying very clearly here? Uh, maybe I will, I will mention that more later. You see, there is the spirit of of God. They are the spirit of the devil and they are the spirit of man. They are not all the same. When God made man, he deposited his spirit in us. In other words, man was created in righteousness and holiness according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. Mm -hmm. But when man sinned, disobeyed God, uh, man became contaminated by the spirit of the devil. Because the spirit of the devil is the spirit of evil, the spirit of wickedness, the spirit of rebellion and disobedience. And so when man listened to the devil and obeyed the devil, instead of abiding in the instruction God gave him at creation, the moment man yielded to the devil, he lost that dominion. He lost that free will that is supposed to in order to make decisions. Devil, the devil took advantage of him. And I pray the devil will not take advantage of your ignorance. Look at what he says there. That the Holy Ghost has knowledge. Only the Holy Ghost has the knowledge of the will of God. You know, that's why the Bible says we should pray in the Holy Ghost. Because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost prays according to the will of God for you. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has mind. I know that may surprise you. That's why we are saying the Holy Ghost is a person. If you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Romans 8, verse 27. I read, he said, 
And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Again, you see, the Holy Spirit prays for us. He makes intercession for us because he knows the, he knows the mind of the Father God. Sometimes we pray amiss. Sometimes we pray according to what we think we have need of. But when you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will take the prayer from you from time to time and pray according to the will of the Father. And of course, you will also see that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Number four, the Holy Spirit has emotion. How come, Pastor Odi? Holy Spirit has emotion when we don't see him. You need to look at that um, Second Corinthians. Now, chapter 2, verse 2. In Second Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. It went on to say in verse 5, But if any have caused grief, he had not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. The point we're bringing out here is that the Holy Spirit sees what we don't see. And he knows what we don't know. Again, the Holy Spirit has will, not only his emotion. The Holy Spirit has will. Huh? How do we know the will of the Holy Spirit? If you look at Acts of the Apostles, we have it both in chapter 13, when he says, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the assignments I have called them. You could see that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, come with me very quickly, when they were having fasting and prayer, then the Holy Ghost spoke. In verse 2 of Acts chapter 13, And as, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, you hear that? The Holy Ghost said, they may not see any physical Holy Ghost, but he spoke through somebody either by prophecy. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And if you can check up also in chapter 16 of that same Acts, chapter 16, verse 6, we read again, Acts 16, verse 6, it said, Now when they had gone through Phrygia and regions of Galatia, and we are forbidden, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So the Holy Ghost can restrain you. The Holy Ghost can move you when you know about the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost therefore has, number one, I did mention, the Holy Ghost has intellect, the Holy Ghost has knowledge, the Holy Ghost has mind, the Holy Ghost has emotion and the holy ghost has will in fact number six the holy ghost teaches if you ever know the office of the holy ghost you know that there's nothing you can teach effectively convincingly without the presence of the holy ghost you will see that in john chapter 14 in verse 16 in john 14 verse 16 it says and i will pray the father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said, I will pray to the Father that the Father will give you another comforter. Now, Jesus couldn't have been the Father and then praying to the Father that he will give them another comforter. Listen to me. That should be a bundle of confusion. That should be a bundle of confusion. God forbid. That would be deception. And that's what we know. That those persons who are, you know, teaching this kind of thing that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Ghost, they don't even have Holy Ghost themselves. They don't know the Holy Ghost themselves. Because they couldn't have, you know, the Holy Ghost would have taught you that, come on, you are at the verge of blasphemy. And not just at the verge of blasphemy, you might even be blaspheming. Because you are ascribing to Jesus what he is not. 
and you are ascribing to the Father what he is not. You are ascribing to the Holy Ghost what he is not. And Jesus said, let me correct this your theology. This your tradition. Huh? He said, get this very clear in that place. He said, I will pray to the Father for you. Verse 16 of that John 14. I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter, another that he may abide with you. Huh? Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he's, it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Let me try and come down. The other thing again that the Holy Ghost testifies. He does testify. Chapter 15 of that St. John in verse 26. Chapter 15 verses 26 and 27. Um, it says, But when the Comforter is come, Watch it now. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. You see the three of them there again. When the Comforter is come, whom I, Jesus, will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which, uh, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. So, come on, friend. Let us come and be reasonable with the Bible. Hmm? How can Jesus be the same one saying, I will pray to myself, being the Father, and then I, the Father, will send the Comforter. It's a confusion. It's a confusion. Let's stop, you know, let us com stop confusing the people. You may say, come on, Pastor, I have been in this thing for a long time. It doesn't matter. It's not too late. The times of this ignorance, God winged out. Acts 17, verse 10, the times of the ignorance, God winged and said, let every one of us repent of this erroneous teaching. It's not biblical. It's not spiritual. It's not scriptural. Let me come down very quickly. The Holy Ghost guides. You see that in chapter 16, in verse 13. You see how we are making progress? Um, John 16, verse 13. He said, How be it when ye, the Spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you uh, into all truths, for he shall not speak of himself, but he whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Again, the Holy Ghost convicts sinners. Without the Holy Ghost, sinners will never be saved. Backsliders will never come back. Look at it in that chapter, um, chapter sixteen. Uh, yes, yeah, chapter sixteen, verse eight. It says. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So it is the Holy Ghost that causes conviction of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. Watch it again. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, when he, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you, hallelujah, unto all truths. Ah, this thing is so, I know, let me quickly push in this again. The Holy Ghost is the one that regenerates. Titus chapter 3, you will see that in Titus chapter 3, Verse 5, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see, the, when we were created, God gave us Holy Ghost, you know. I'm telling you. Go to Genesis chapter 2, you will see it in verse 7. God created man perfectly. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. He created us fine, fine, fine. Righteous, holy, filled with the Holy Ghost. But when sin came, the Holy Ghost left. Believe it. That's the Bible. And then the spirit of man, the natural spirit to sustain the body, to sustain the life of the person, giving him an opportunity to return to God. That's why we have breath in us. 
Every man you see on the streets, breathing up and down, does not have the Holy Ghost. They don't have it. Only when you become born again, according to John chapter 3, verses 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. When you become born again, the depressed spirit in you is regenerated, renewed to have the Holy Ghost again. My friend, I want you to recognize the place of the Holy Ghost and appreciate the Godhead. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you very much. Your word says very clearly, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Lord God, as many as are hearing me, and right now they are thinking deeply, truly saying, I have not known this truth in the past. And today, they are repenting of that ignorance. Father, forgive. Forgive and restore them into clean relationship, clear relationship with the Father, with the Word, and with the Holy Ghost. And let their prayer be sweet. Let their fellowship with you be perfect. Let them have a breakthrough. Remove the consequences of ignorance and deception from their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for as many as have heard me today. And they are saying, Lord, I have heard the truth. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will regenerate their hearts. We regenerate them and reconcile them to you, reconnect them to you, restore them into fellowship and to the perfect will of the Almighty. Make their conscience to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks now and then. Father, receive the glory, receive the honor, heal our churches, heal the ministers of the gospel that they may preach the sound gospel with the fullness of Godhead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. My friend, thank you very much. I believe you've been blessed. And I want you to share this material with as many as possible. Go to our Facebook. Uh, it's Augustine O.D. Jamaica. Or you go to our YouTube. Kingdom Life is the Palab. Share with as many persons. Go to your Instagram. Go to uh, Messenger. You will see this message there. And then share with as many as possible because the more you share it, the more you do evangelism, the more you become instrumental to the liberation of those who are in captivity of darkness. God bless you. My name is Augustine Ode. The program was Deep Alive Bible Church. Bye for now. Empower yourself for evangelism at the Deeper Life School of Evangelism. We have eight locations across the island. No CXC required, no age limits, and no church discrimination. Register now for the Certificate, Diploma, or Bachelor's Program. For more information, call the Deeper Life School of Evangelism at 876-923-1040 or 876-829-9798. Deeper Life School of Evangelism, your ideal Bible training school.